you to get into is after each x-ray you want to push the R button twice. After each x-ray, whether it's a pan or a 3D. First R to accept the x-ray and the second R to move the x-ray to the home position. The reason why I like to do that, that way when the patient comes in, you have, it's less work to do. Yeah. You only have to worry about positioning as opposed to let's move the machine and, and all that good stuff. The last thing you want to do is, the, is uh, you know, after you get the software ready and select the programs, hit the R button. Until this says ready for exposure, you can't really ask the patient to walk in and position them because they could be waiting for you to do stuff while they're standing there. You yeah. don't want that. All right? So uh, now we're, we're good here. Let's take a look at the screen because the, the image should be rendering right now. Okay. So this could take, depending on the speed of your network, a minute and a half to maybe two minutes, maybe two and a half minutes, it depends. This is not HD mode, it should be faster. HD mode, doctor, just to give you an idea. What we've done here, the machine took 300 tiny images and it calculated all those images into a volume for you. In HD mode, it takes 500 of those tiny images. The radiation goes slightly higher and the time it takes a little bit longer. Is it worth it? Absolutely. It just depends on what you're trying to do. If it's a standard day-to-day -day 3D, just take it on non-HD. If you know for sure a patient com is coming in for a reason, like endo, you know, you want to find out, or they have a pain in one tooth, and there's a chance maybe it could be cracked, and you want to see that, then you put it in HD mode. But something there's asymptomatic, just take it in non-HD. Does that make sense? The quality is phenomenal, even in non-HD, mm -hmm. I can tell you that. Even for like regular implants? Absolutely. Implants, regular. You don't want to use HD all the time, okay. just because it's prettier, mm -hmm. it, it takes a little bit longer. Okay. So, and you'll be happy with what you see here. So here's the, uh, the, the screenshot of the, uh, the, the area that we covered just kind of gives you an idea, okay, this is the area that we took x-ray of. Okay, this is not in 3D, that's just a screenshot, right? Mm. So here, the first thing you want to do, my suggestion is, before you open in 3D, the, the scan in 3D, you always want to save the exam and give it a name, such as today's date. So that if, if the patient comes back for another 3D, you can take it and put another date so the doctor can see when did we take that first one, when did we take the second one. I think it's easier to track, okay? Especially if you're doing bone augmentation, uh, something like that where you want to track it. Has it been three, four months, something like that, all right? So here, I would go to exam, save as. Mm -hmm. Today's date's perfectly fine. Now, if you want to add another note to that, implantation, orthopatient, endopatient, whatever you want to do, uh, pain in the condyle or something, whatever you want to do, you can do that, but the date just leave if you will, all right? And then we click OK. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you're done. You took the x-ray, you're good to go. Now, if the doctor wants you to burn that scan onto a CD for, for a patient to take home or to send it to a specialist for some reason or to another office who send you the patient for the scan, then you do the following. You open that in 3D and the 3D software is called Galaxis. You see that? You open it. Now here's your patient, right? Mm -hmm. And notice, when you opened in 3D, 2D is still open, meaning the patient's information and the screenshot. We just opened a module within the software. It's called Galaxis. That's the 3D software, all right? And it's open right here. You see, always, you're always going to have both. This is Galaxis. This is Sedexis. Both open, okay? See that, doctor? Mm -hmm. How coverage is pretty nice, mm -hmm. even in the uh, anterior. Wow. Now, the only thing you have to do, I'm jealous. <laughs> Look at this. I'm jealous. 
this is nice. I mean, you don't have a whole lot going on. You know, normally I look at the crowns all over the place and stuff. This is great. <laughs> so, um, I think in this case, if you want to burn it on a CD, if you have a CD burner on this computer, mm -hmm. it's two clicks. One here. You see that? It looks like a CD. Mm -hmm. It says create viewer. Notice how every time you point at an icon, it, it tells you what it does. Mm -hmm. So right here, create viewer CD wrap and go, you click once. So you don't have a CD burner here. I don't have one? No. Okay. If you I, did, have a, I have an external um, Lightscribe one. Uh, I could just plug fine. it in? Absolutely. Okay. And it'll recognize it automatically. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. This will recognize if you have a CD burner because mm -hmm. it'll it'll say, it'll give you another option. It'll say, write to CD recommended. Okay. And then you click okay. burn. It'll be another button here. It'll say burn CD. You click mm -hmm. it, and that's it. Okay. Can we um, uh, copy it into like a thumb drive or something? Absolutely. See, now here, copy to the directory. You can see how it's default to C drive. Mm -hmm. You can actually put it on a uh, flash drive. Okay. The reason why the CD is recommended and it's better, when you insert the CD, it loads up automatically. With a flash drive, you have to kind of like auto run, and if for someone they're not necessarily savvy with these things, mm -hmm. they might be confused. You just want to be able to give it to somebody, they insert it into their computer and it pops up. Okay. But otherwise, yes, it does work. Okay. So I'm going to cancel this. And. This is your 3D image. This is nice, I like it. So basically when you take that slicing window just to kind of give you an overview how that stuff works and then we'll spend more time with it. You can just take that slicing window over the area of interest and it shows you, it gives you the cross-sectional view. Like this is tooth number eight that I selected. If I double click on it, now it shows me the cross-sectional view of the tooth. You can see the APCs here. And this is the front view of the tooth. Okay. And this is the axial view. Each, each uh, window is labeled. This mm -hmm. is axial, cross-sectional, tendential. So for uh, navigation, if you left click and hold the mouse right here, see how it shows two arrows. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. The two arrows meaning you can navigate, you can move in that view and out of that view. But this is up and down, in and out, but it's in the up and down mode. Okay. So if I'm press and hold and I, I now I'm moving from the maxilla to the mandible. And if you move slowly, you can see the canals. You got five. Nice. Wow. See this? <laughs> And um, so you'll be able to see that, and that's the beauty of 3D, is that you're able to see exactly what's going on before you start digging, really. Is that what, uh, for endo, is, is that a good mode to <clears throat> get into? Absolutely. Absolutely. A couple of different things, just to give you an idea. For endo, let's say we're looking at this molar here. Mm -hmm. Double click on it. So this shows you the number of canals. But if you look at the shape of the canals, then you can look at the cross-sectional view right here for example and this is the same molar that we're looking at but it would show the show you the curvature so you can see if the canals you know your mesial or distal or you know buccal canal mm -hmm. it has a curve you can't see it from the up and down but you'll be able to see it in these mm -hmm. views so you would have to use all of these pretty much but as far as finding like MB2 MB3 or MB5, you know, <laughs> you can see it there, okay? Um, this is just like a wow factor. So this is where the patient acceptance, case acceptance comes in play with something like this. We can explain to them, uh, you're going to get to a point where you'll be able to explain to them precisely what you're doing and show them in three-dimensional. Uh, each window here has a little button here that allows you to fill up the screen with one view. 